Today I'm swapping out the battery to battery charger, which uh, charges my leisure batteries when I'm driving. Um, if you don't know about these and you're doing a, a van build or you already got a van build and you don't have one, uh, have a look online, do your research because really you're going to burn out your alternator. You could potentially burn out your alternator quicker um, and sort of knock your, knock your battery. So it's a false economy not going down this route um, if you uh, for, for any van and certainly with anything with a modern vehicle. Uh, anyone that advises just putting one of these so-called smart relays, um, you know, do your own research really. Um, so anyway, this, 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 this Sterling unit I've had for about uh, two years and it's developed a fault which, you know, it's just one of these things I think. Uh, I phoned Sterling and they were absolutely great, good good British company, you phone up straight through from the main uh, uh, the main menu when you call, straight through to technical support, no questions asked, straight into the troubleshooting. Uh, you got a multimeter handy, ah yep, great, magic, let's pass through it. Um, that seems to have a fault, pop it back to us, we'll have a look. Absolutely great. Um, in the meantime, I've bought a Victron, one of the Orion TR things, because actually this this is a 60 amp one, which is too big for my leisure batteries. I've got 260 amp hours. It's too much juice. I could put this into half power mode, um, but uh, yeah, I need uh, I need the the charging of the van up and running over this week before Christmas, really. So um, I'm just the Victron's arrived. I'm going to pop it in. When this comes back from Sterling, um, I'll use this for another application because it's it's absolutely great. Um, however, the, the Victron has uh, Bluetooth and you can monitor it a bit more without having to buy a display. So uh, I'll just probably leave that in and then say use this for something else. Um, I've half unscrewed it just now because uh, I can't get into the, the terminals because I've kind of shoehorned it in there. So what I have done before I've done anything like that is I've disconnected the earths. Uh, and I've also got uh, isolators on um, sort of both sides of this as well, which is a... A safe thing to do you know any any kind of high current uh, cabling um, in a van you want to be able to isolate individual bits uh, and for the cost of a rotary isolator you know they're about a tenner you know it's, it's a no-brainer really this this one here on the right is the kill all switch so this this big red um, 70 millimeter square cable is the feed from the leisure batteries to everything else in the back of the van and if there's any kind of problem I can turn that knob and uh, just kill the whole lot, um, which uh, I'd really high re highly recommend. Uh, electrical fire in a van is just, yeah, it's, it's unthinkable really, so just, just be safe. Um, and everything fused as well, so I've got a fuse on the output from the charger. So uh, let's get this thing swapped over. Okay, so that's the mountain holes drilled for this and I've connected up the ground and the input, as you can see. Uh, we want to do this first because we want to adjust the output before we uh, connect up the leisure batteries. If you're doing this, have a look at the manual. Don't screw it up. So I've just turned on the isolator in the front here. This this rotary isolator is, separates the alternator and front batteries from the battery to battery charger unit. Quite a good thing to have because if you're doing a lot of start-stop driving you don't want to be starting that charge cycle all the time. Um, and uh, you know say your say your front batteries here have become low in the winter, you've uh, had a problem getting your vehicle started and they need to charge, you can stop some of the current from the alternator going to charge your leisure batteries and go into that sort of system there so just gives you options. Great, so that's power going to the unit. Let's open up the app. Apologies for the silence. I just uh, screen record off the iPhone. So as you saw there, the unit needed a firmware update and it also was set to power supply mode rather than charger mode by default. So updated the firmware, changed it to charger mode and uh, turned the output off. This is why we connect the supply side before we do the output. So I uh, on for a couple of minutes, let uh, the starter battery recover and we've got this on.
yeah so as you've seen from the screenshot there it's uh enabled in the software now and uh charging perfectly so all working fine as expected as you can see that wasn't a major task really to change that over or you know install one from scratch and connecting up the unit um i've obviously got a couple of wee things follow on from here um i made some changes because i had both um earths running into here uh, from the uh, battery bank in the front and from the, the leisure batteries into the sterling because they have bigger bigger connection terminals you know they're, they're pretty huge um compared to the uh compared to the victrol ones so i ran a uh, i ran the one from the battery straight onto the uh straight off the main buzz bar there uh crimped on a uh a ring terminal, um, if you've seen my video on using a hydraulic crimper, handy handy thing, they're about 25 quid and you're doing proper connections, you don't want any of this, uh, as you can see there's some pretty meaty cables here, one on the left is a 70mm square, and this is for running the, uh, the, the stupidly massive inverter here, but yeah, so well worth doing that, a couple of follow on rejobs, so um, I can't get any more length than this. This was fine with the sterling because it was lower down, so I had length, but um, I'll replace this. But I'm happy that's tight enough just now anyway, and it's not under any tension. It just doesn't look good the way it's rooted. I want to root it the same as the other. there that uh, there was a few other settings that I changed in the software before I enabled charging for the first time. So um, uh, by default, it came for charging lithium. I've got, uh, I've got lead acid and uh, a few things like that. So, um, you know read through the manual you know, this isn't plug and play um, and you do sort of kind of have to understand what you're doing that's where the the sterling's quite good it just kind of uh, defaulted to what I needed and it was more kind of plug and play but um, yeah there's, there's uh, equally as much control through both units um, but uh, I think this probably suits my needs better here it's more suitably sized um, but uh, again do your own research on you know what style of battery to battery charger you want what model what suits your needs and uh, also the sort of settings when you're setting these things up is really really important so going back to the ability to turn your uh, charging system on and off while you're driving with a handy rotary switch as well as to isolate it for maintenance and safety um, is uh, I shall the, the engine's running just now it's charging I'll go into the software and I'll disable the charger it's currently in absorption mode I'll disable the charger turn it back on and you'll see it goes straight back into bulk. So this is what you want to try and avoid is if your leisure batteries are fully charged and uh, you're doing a lot of, sort of start stop wee bits and bobs you're sort of dotting around wee places um, you don't really want to throw it into bulk all the time you know your batteries don't need any more uh, any more energy put into them. Another consideration is heat. These generate quite a bit of heat um, and the, I noticed immediately the difference between the Sterling unit and the Victron unit is the Victron's got a massive heat sink on the back and the Sterling has a massive heat sink on the back with a fan so it's forced air cooling and I have heard that come on when it's doing a quite a heavy charge um, over the past couple of years fairly regularly. Um, which means that you do need to pay attention where you're mounting these. I've got this mounted on um, a steel steel bulkhead off the van, and as you can see, over vents, so there's airflow going through there. But if you're mounting this inside uh, a wee cubby hole somewhere in your van, uh, one of these charger units, um, or anything, indeed, that produces heat, um, you really want to pay attention to that because they, they, they'll, they'll have a thermal cut out inside them. Um, but, you know, if you want to charge you, your batteries, uh, the height of summer and it can get bloody warm inside vans um, it, you may think you may come a cropper there so another one thing you may want to consider is as I mount stuff on cable tray and uh, I've used cable tray here because it's it's not only useful but also um, it dissipates heat so if you're using regardless of the sterling or the, uh, the, the Victron here they do have heat sinks and uh, mounting it onto, rather than onto a, a wooden surface in the van, uh, onto a, a bit of cable tray, which you can pick up fairly cheaply from here and there, um, or some sort of metallic surface. Cable tray is great because it's got holes in it as well, so it dissipates the heat, um, lets a bit of air flow in. Um, it's well worth, uh, well worth considering.
A final thing on a good practice point of view is I shall wait for a couple of charging cycles um, or a few or whatever and I'll check the security of these uh, terminal screws. I've installed this on a, a winter's day uh, minus whatever so the you know they're going to heat up and then cool down and uh, things can become loose particularly probably if you do it more in the summer and then you come into the winter you know you install any kind of metal connections metallic connections in the summer check them in the winter just check for security there's a, quite a few amps flowing through this so uh, you know you just it's going to avoid some tears